Hi, this is John Solari, The Method Actor Speaks. And today we're going to be talking about a new film festival and a film with Leonard Lee... Bouchel. Bouchel. That's a lovely name. And you spell your name Leonard, N-E-O? L-A-L-E-N-L-E-O-N-A-R-D. Oh, because... Like Bernstein and Cohen. Okay. Well, I saw this film here. We got Real Recovery Film Festival. And what I really wanted to know, Leonard, was uh, how did this come about and why? Uh, well, we actually started it five years ago, so it's not as new as you might think. Uh, in fact, we're having our fifth uh, Real Recovery Film Festival at the Lemley Monica Fourplex starting Friday, October 18th to the 24th. And five years ago, um, I had founded a nonprofit organization called Writers in Treatment. Uh, basically modeled on what Buddy Arnold did for musicians, oh, where we give scholarships to people in the writing industry, and now it's expanded to uh, other individuals as well who needed to go into rehab. Buddy Arnold, what a, what, what a sweetheart he was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good guy. Yeah, so sort of like in his honor, I uh, started something you know, for the people in the writing industry. And as I said, now we help individuals from outside the writing industry. And so, a couple months after starting that, we thought, what would be a good way to get some publicity? Or get the word out, right. uh, you know, on a very small budget. So, we rented the silent movie theater on Fairfax in Los Angeles, <coughs> excuse me, for eight nights, eight Tuesday nights in a row. And the first year, we showed mostly classics. And the first uh, screening we did was A Permanent Midnight by Jerry Stahl. And he and Ben Stiller came to the theater and did like a great half hour Q&A conversation after the film. Mm. And we showed some of the other classics like Lost Weekend and uh, the Days of Wine and Roses. We showed Barfly and we had a, uh, a woman who was, uh, who was in the, who was hey, in the film threw, Barfly. I was, up, no, I was up for a movie but I showed up drunk. <clears throat> method acting, <laughs> taking yeah. it too far. I okay. am a method, yes. Mm -hmm. I always remember that. So a woman from the movie, she came and did a great interview afterwards, uh, because while she was when she wasn't on camera, she was Bukowski's minder, who oh. came to the set every day. So she has some great Bukowski stories. And the last film we showed of that series was uh, a little unknown classic. I guess it wouldn't be a classic if it was unknown. Called Ivan's Ecstasy, directed by Bernard Rose, who also directed Immortal Beloved oh. and another a number of other great films, and it was one of the first films Hollywood ever made on a digital camera. Really? With a small yeah. crew starring Danny, Danny Houston, and so he and Danny came, and that was like a sold-out show. That was our final night of that first Real Recovery Film Festival, and, uh, and then we took it to a legitimate theater in Hollywood, and um, another legitimate theater, and now we've been at the Lemley Monica Fourplex for the last couple of years. So basically, you're a writer too. Where did you get your start writing? Well, why did you become a writer? That's even better. Um, you got a nice smile on that one. Well, I started to become a writer when I realized women responded to love letters really, really? well. <laughs> yeah. So I started young in that regard. And I took classes at Naropa in Boulder, Colorado. with. Allen Ginsberg and Gregory Corso and King Kesey showed up for a little while. So it was just sort of something I never did for a living, but I did as a as a an expression. Interesting. And then it wound up being a profession? Well it never wound up being. When I worked as a drug counselor for a number of years, I used to have to write reports on all my 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 clients. That's, that's a little, little different. short stories. You didn't get to be that creative. Yeah, but I didn't want to like. Lay Did on you ever the use them later on? Those the reports. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the what came, the thoughts well, of them, and anything about putting it into a screenplay or. Uh, like, I, the cook was I thought of. I wrote a treatment for a screenplay. I figure out how long ago it was. I worked at a facility that was run by some strange, charismatic rabbi. And in the screenplay, I wrote that to completely offend everyone, he decided to allow a film crew to come in and film the goings-on at the rehab. 
And at the time, that was satire and irony. And then the next year, Celebrity Rehab was so, on the air. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so what I thought was unthinkable became very commercial and very successful. When you say that now, it's true. What we thought years ago, it's the norm today. Mm -hmm. It really is. And on this project, I mean, the festival, who are some of the uh, are the films with people that have been in recovery and things like that? You know, the actors, or it's just about you know, that? You know, the regulations are that the filmmakers don't necessarily have to be in recovery or, mm -hmm. or of that nature, but the, all the subject matter has to deal with addiction, alcoholism, other behavioral disorders, uh, and some mental disorders. We had uh, Joey Pants movie last year, What Me Too, which was a great film about bipolarism. And so we've done some other things. We had a film from England about two guys who lived together who were abusive, but they, it was a great love story. Uh, but they were both like on the county rolls for right. being mentally unstable. So we get films from Copenhagen we've shown, we have a couple from England, uh, Canada. So we get submissions from all over the world now. Okay. Do you have a website? Uh, the website is realrecoveryfilmfestival.org and real is spelled R-E-E-L. So it's realrecoveryfilmfestival.org and there you'll see information about the film festivals that we're doing. Uh, we just got done doing one in New York for a week at the Quad Cinema in the Village. Uh, we had one the week before at the University of North Texas near Denton, north of Dallas. Uh, we started this particular fall season uh, with a weekend festival in Las Vegas at the UNLV. And after this week we do in uh, Santa Monica, we have a three-day film festival in Delray Beach, Florida. And then we take a little break for, this, for the holidays and then start next April with a film festival in San Francisco. That'll be uh, at the Delancey Street facility. We have a beautiful 160-seat theater at Delancey Street. And then we move up the coast or up the, up the, up the five to Sacramento. And we'll do a film festival in Sacramento and then one in Nashville. The Delancey Street, is that the Settlement House? It is the Settlement House. It's been yeah. called that since the early 1900s. I didn't, know, I didn't know it was called Settlement House. Yes, yeah. As soon as you said Delancey Street. Down. Yeah. It's, 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 That's it's, known for their moving company. Well, and now they have a fabulous like gourmet was, restaurant right on the Embarcadero yeah. in San Francisco. It's terrific. But I mean, in New York, the, it was called the Settlement House, the mm -hmm. Delancey Street. Yeah, yeah. A lot of old Simnon people, I think. Well, yeah. Have gone on to found some significant facilities. I was born in New York, and when you were talking about Joe Pants' movie, I feel, you know, people I, my age always want to do mine because I was watching, this is a true story, too. I was watching Cuckoo's Nest the other day, and, and uh, when they were interviewing him, you know, Jack Nicholson, mm -hmm. now, I've seen this movie a thousand times, and I was sitting there and I'm saying, that's the exact same interview they were doing for me. I was, when I was about 14, I was sent to a mental hospital because I used to love to fight. And uh, in those days, in the 50s, mm -hmm. they could keep you for life. And what they did, they were experimenting. They, half of us was getting medication and the other half wasn't. And I was one of the lucky ones because I saw guys getting lobotomies. Right. And, Shock treatment. So you were yeah. lucky because you weren't getting the medication? I was lucky, yeah, because I really was. They, I, I used to fight right. a lot. You know, if you, if, you, if you came, if you didn't, you know, my hands were always up fighting. And uh, so they wanted to find out why, but I, I never felt that I was crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This was in the 50s when they were experimenting. Defensive. Yeah, well, right. You know. mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up in the South Bronx, Fort Apache, and I, I remember I told Danny Aiello, I didn't know it was a bad neighbor until I saw the movie. <laughs> and where do you come from, Lennon? Um, Philadelphia. You know, I want to say, you know, I, suburb of New York. If there's one thing when I, every time I think about you, and I wish your your dog was alive. So thank, thank you. You know, it was uh, yeah. it was really always on your lap, mm -hmm. you know, or someone's lap. It was such a lovely, lovely dog. 
He, he was the mascot of the film festival too. Yeah, okay, but you, do you he, have, he'd run up on stage at Q. Yeah, really? And th make a little presentation. Oh, yeah, that's great. But thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, when every time I, I, I think of you, I. I we had a lovely funeral last year for him. Really? Yeah, out here in Calabasas. Wow. And we'll be having an unveiling uh, in December. Oh. If anybody out there who's a fan of Goliath, you're more than welcome to come. I'll give you the information privately later. Probably, yeah, and you could also get them off on Facebook too. Yeah. Facebook too. Leonard Because Cisco's on Facebook and mm -hmm. uh, YouTube. And it's really great. What other things are you up to that you want to talk about? Well, we also do an, a yearly event at the Skirball Cultural Center called the Experience, Strength, and Hope Awards. Really? Where every year we have a, an event there that honors uh, a high-profile celebrity who's written a memoir about their addiction and their journey to recovery. So a few years ago we, had, uh, we gave an award to uh, Lou Gossett Jr. Right. who'd written about his, his path and then uh, the following year, we presented an award to Buzz Aldrin, who, who wrote very candidly about his depression and his alcoholism. Right. And uh, last year, we gave, uh, it was actually Robert Downey Jr. presented an award to John Taylor, who was the co-founder of Duran Duran, who also came out with a, a great memoir last year about his career and his childhood and his ending up in a facility in coming around and, you know, carrying the torch and being a great uh, role model for lots of people. And this year, on February 13th, it's a Thursday, uh, we're presenting the award to Carrie White. Well, yeah, I read that, yeah. Carrie White has a great book out there called Uppercut. Yeah, I was going to say she does. Yeah. yeah. We're friends so, on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, well, you'll meet her on the 13th, if uh, not sooner. Uh, yeah. She's Really? So go on. Well, I know what I was so, going to ask you. Yeah. You what? I, did, you know, when you mentioned ce celebrity rehab, and we know a lot of the act people, I, I don't even want to call them actors, half of them, uh, they were look, just looking for publicity and to be seen again. Do you, you know, because that camera there, mm -hmm. outside of a woman, is the most powerful weapon in the world. Okay. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I mean, do you get a lot of people that want to use what you're doing for publicity? Or do you, can you see through the, the phoniness or the honesty that's... Well, at the event that we do at the Skirball, which is a pretty high profile event, I, I don't allow cameras. I don't allow anybody to tape it. Great. So it becomes like a big sort of 12-step meeting in, in essence. And even last year with Downey Jr. presenting an award to John Taylor, CNN was calling and saying, can we have a film crew there? We'll cover it, we'll cover it. And I said, you can cover it, but you can't film it. You can talk about it, but you can't film it. So it has a really intimate atmosphere, even though there's 365 people. It's like just between us. Right. And, and when does this happen? That's going to happen February 13th, 2014. It's on a Thursday. We just did a, a thing in... in uh, in New York called Chasing the Muse, dot, 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 Stone Cold Sober, where we have high-profile writers talk about uh, how their creative juices had to get flowing again after they got stopped. And so we had Susan Cheever, uh, John Cheever's daughter, who's written a number of great books, including a great biography of Bill Wilson. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, called Bill W. Uh, William Moyers also wrote a couple great books called uh, Broken, and my phone is ringing at an inopportune time. I think that was his follow-up that's, that's what's great about this show. It's, you know, it's this impromptu. I was going to find out who it is. It's right at you, can But well, we also had David Carr there, great uh, you know, New York Times journalist. Oh, and okay. Lawrence Block and Malachi McCourt. And so that was also a very, like, only the people in the room got to appreciate these incredible writers talking about you know, their creativity, their recovery, a little bit about anonymity. And I like what Malachi McCourt said about anonymity, and I won't try and do his Irish accent. He says, my anonymity is mine to do with as I please. 
That's true. And Susan Cheever said, in this day and age, we might not, it might not, you know, we, we can't afford to be secret anymore. Yeah, that's true. Just a little change in the paradigm. But I mean, a as a, I was thinking as a writer now, to be a writer years ago, you mm -hmm. had to be a drunk. You know, I mean, it was. Well, Susan Cheever has actually come writing a book now that disproves that myth. I, I there a few high profile Hemingways yeah. and whatnot, but yeah. essentially, all the writers, all the great American writers in the, eight, in the 1900s, uh -huh. like Whitman and other people whose names right. I can't remember, were not at all. Yeah. There were a few high profile, and maybe it helps a little, but. I think what you write drunk never sounds good in the morning when you read no, it. So no. well, nothing does. I mean, it's that <laughs> who? <laughs> I've been charged with what crime? What judge? When? <laughs> How did I get here? <laughs> it's, it's, that's so true. <laughs> I mean, we laugh about it, but it was made. I guess that myth and all that about the booze, because it was so popular, and, and booze was romantic in those days. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was yes, cigarettes yes. and booze. Yes, you know, of That's course. what you were brought up on. Mm -hmm. uh, coffee, cigarettes, and booze, and women. You know, and, and that was life. And gambling, if you were from Philly. Well, well New York too, but, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, it's funny, today, I get, I get up when I used to go to bed in <laughs> my youth, you know. I wake up like six o'clock in the morning now in my youth. I mm -hmm. love that word, youth, mm -hmm. <laughs> from my cousin Vinny. I get up at that time. And that, that was the time I was going to bed. I used to find that if you drove home from the hotel back to your house at like 6.30 in the morning, even if you were weaving, cops thought you were anxious to get to work. Get to work. It's a good way. So you so you'd wait till sunrise. Morning. Yeah. <laughs> good thinking. That's really is. It was very manageable if you managed it like an addict. Now, do you run this by yourself, or you must have a lot of help? And I, I have, I have help. Yeah, yeah. but it's, have, uh, yeah. so sure. Once again, uh, let's let the people know how to get in touch with you um, because we're just about. The website is realrecoveryfilmfestival.org, and that's real R E E L, which I think anybody under thirty now doesn't even know what a reel is, but it used to be true, how yeah. film was distributed and should project it. Like this here. There so you go. Like that's here. a reel. Uh, there's also the website writersintreatment.org, the nonprofit writersintreatment.org, and all the proceeds from any event that we do goes to getting people into rehab. And uh, Facebook, Leonard Lee Bouchel, B U S C H E L. That's good. And, and do you, what are the names of the films that you'd be seeing? The names of the film this year. We are showing a very popular, excellent film from last year with Denzel Washington called Flight. That's one of our. Oh, right. yeah, one yeah. of our Hollywood movies. We're showing a great hour movie by Russell Brand, called My Life Without Drugs. Uh, a great New York story called Radio Man, about a, a homeless. These are all first grade movies. Yeah, show. about a homeless guy in New York, uh, whose only dream in life was to be an extra in film. So he started hanging around film sets, and occasionally he would pick up like a little crowd scene extra job. But then one day he was it got into a conversation with Bruce Willis, and Bruce Willis said something, and this guy had an epiphany and stopped drinking and got off the street, and now he's like the darling of the New York film scene. He's been in a hundred movies, gets a little speaking role in all of Scorsese's movies. So there's a great movie about him called Radio Man. That's on Friday. Uh, we're also showing a number of shorts on Saturday. Great shorts, the most creative. You know, little stories, and in nine minutes you can get so much information, so much heart and soul into a, you know, onto a screen. Uh, we're showing the Bill W. documentary that came out last year. Excellent film about Bill W. You know, not the right. James Woods version, not the Hallmark Actually, version. Actually, that was a good version, really, James Woods. Not bad. No. Uh, but this tells you really who he was right, and, exactly. and, and how it all happened. Uh, we're showing a great film with... Uh, actor Leslie Jordan called It Takes All Types, made in West Hollywood. Uh, one of the, the only other classic we're showing this year is called Man with the Golden Arm. Frank which Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. Should have won the Academy Award. 1955. Brilliant. If you don't know who Frank, why no, Frank Sinatra was Frank Sinatra, yeah. his acting in this part is really understated. It really brilliant. was. Kim Novak. Junkie. Yeah, Kim Novak. And Arnold Stang. Arnold Stang. 
<laughs> Marlon Brando's uh, We're showing a 10-year anniversary of a movie called Owning Mahoney, starring Philip Seymour Hoffman, one of the best realistic true stories about a compulsive gambler from Canada, Owning Mahoney, if you haven't seen it, and, uh, and we're having people brought there who are in certain gambling programs. Uh, we're showing a film called uh, Invisible War, about sexual assaults in the military, which has already helped us get some laws changed in the military, and we're going to have a couple therapists talking about women and trauma afterwards. And uh, one of our favorites, which was a sold-out house in New York, is called uh, Perseverance, the Dr. Billy Taylor story. Billy Taylor was the greatest running back for Michigan State ever, and this is a story about his career and his ending up living on the street. And now he runs some facilities in Detroit called Get Back Up, because that was his motto as a football player, Get Back Up. Yeah. And as a recovering cat, it's Get Back Up. And he'll be there. He's coming in from Detroit. Great. And the director will be there. That's Wednesday night. A uh, little side thing we do is a comedy night. Uh, it's called Rich Scheidner's Comedy Explosion. That's Wednesday night at the Lemley on 2nd Street. Uh, we have a... We have a uh, Oh, for me, I thought uh, that was my cousin Camille Solaris. Uh, <laughs> she's a comedian. Uh, we're also showing the classic Drunk in Public. If you've never seen it, that's playing on Thursday. Too bad Fred uh, Foster Brook was a little high. Yes, <laughs> yes. He was a great drunk uh -huh. on Martin show. <laughs> I remember. Uh, you can't do that today, I mean, on television. Well, not, if, not, if, not, if, not, not knowingly. Uh, Perfection, great movie about... Uh, also, a homemade, uh, not a homemade movie, a locally made movie by a great uh, director, actress named Christina Beck. Uh -huh. Christina Beck, a great movie called Perfection. Uh, and then we close the festivals with a terrific movie out of San Francisco called May I Be Frank. Also, true story about a gentleman in San Francisco whose life is just a complete, his physical life, spiritual life, emotional life is a complete wreck. And he wanders into Cafe Gratitude one day, and the owners decide to make him a project, like a like a Pygmalion, uh -huh. like a like a My Fair Daddy, or uh, My Fair Lady, uh, and so you see his whole transformation. And Frank will be there, Frank Ferrante, so he'll be there. We got through the book, to it. right at the end here. Yeah. Listen, I want to so, thank you for coming on. This has been a real gift for us and out there. And if you want to come on the you. show, no, thank you. Yeah. You can get in touch with me at the Method Actors Speaks at Gmail or 818-773-0991. And I'm also on Facebook, John Solari. And I always get the name because I did a, a Brunson movie and they call me Scolari, S-C. So I always have people mm -hmm. say the last name. Minus S-O-L-A-R-I, like Sola in an I. But this has really been great. I'm really happy. Thanks, John. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And we'll end with that, my folks. And this will be on tonight.